My wife is the city's swimming champion. When both her unforgettable first love and I fell into the water, she didn't hesitate to save him. After she pulled him ashore, he looked at me provocatively and said, Sorry, Zoe is too tired to save you. You'll have to figure out how to get out on your own. I struggled in the water, and my wife Zoe looked at me with disdain. You must have pushed Anthony, otherwise, how could he have fallen into the water? I ran out of strength and started to sink. Zoe, however, panicked. Chapter 1. Help. Help. Anthony and I called for help loudly, but my wife didn't even look at me. She jumped into the water and swam straight toward Anthony as if she hadn't seen me at all. Anthony, are you okay? I watched Zoe's back, wanting to call for help, but the river water rushed into my mouth and nose, filling them instantly. The cold river water submerged me, and I watched in despair as Zoe saved Anthony and brought him to the shore. Anthony looked at me with a challenging gaze, sorry, Zoe is too tired to save you. You'll have to figure out how to get out on your own. I wanted to say something but could only look in despair, unable to utter a word. Gradually, I sank, until a swimmer saw me and brought me to shore. I coughed up water like a dying fish. Meanwhile, Zoe was busy drying Anthony's head with a towel, not even looking at me. It was only after she finished that she looked down at me with disdain, you must have pushed Anthony, otherwise, how could he have fallen into the water? Don't you know Anthony is afraid of water? Why would you do such a disgusting thing? Anthony stopped her, it's okay, Zoe, don't be angry. I think William didn't do it on purpose. It's just that I was too close to you, and he felt uncomfortable. It's always like this, just a few words to seal my fate. No matter what happens, Zoe always unconditionally believes Anthony's slander and provocation against me. Just because he is her unforgettable first love from high school. William, you're disgusting. You should have drowned just now. You're uncomfortable, so you want to kill someone. If I hadn't been here today, the consequences would have been unthinkable. Struggling underwater had drained all my energy. I couldn't even move my mouth to argue with her. The onlookers pointed at us as if watching a hilarious joke. I should have, as usual, defended myself the moment Anthony slandered me. If Zoe didn't believe me, I would bow my head, admit my fault, and apologize to both of them, taking the blame. But just now, in the throes of a desperate struggle, I suddenly figured it out. Apart from life and death, nothing else matters. Having already stepped one foot into the gates of hell, why should I care whether she divorces me or quarrels with me? You two really are a perfect match. One dares to say it, and the other dares to believe it. I struggled to sit up and looked at them. Zoe's face turned black immediately, William, what do you mean? At this point, you still doubt our relationship. I've already told you we're just friends. Can't you stop making trouble? Think about it yourself. With that, Zoe took Anthony and turned back to the hotel, leaving me alone by the river. In three years of marriage, I've often heard this sentence. Whenever I didn't go along with her wishes or couldn't stand her and Anthony, she would leave me with these words. And I would always go to her to apologize as if I were in the wrong. Looking at it now, I realize I was the one who wasn't thinking clearly. A wife who can disregard my life isn't worth cherishing. Chapter 2 Because I was soaked in the cold river water for too long, I developed a high fever the next day and stayed in the hotel for an entire day. But my fever was too severe, and since I was unfamiliar with the city, and only here with Zoe and Anthony, there was no one to take care of me. After some thought, I struggled to call Zoe. The moment the call connected, loud DJ music blasted through my ears. It was obvious Zoe and Anthony were at a club, and when she saw my call, Zoe's annoyed voice came through, William, why are you calling? Don't you know we have our own things to do? I held back my temper and spoke kindly, Zoe, I'm sick. Could you please buy me some fever medicine and bring it to me? I, before I could finish, the call was abruptly cut off. I was stunned, unwilling to believe Zoe had hung up on me intentionally, so I called again. This time, her voice was even more impatient, William, can you stop bothering me? Do you think pretending to be sick will fool me? Isn't it just because you don't want me to have fun with Anthony? Let me tell you, William, stop making a fuss. We came here for work and we're just relaxing a bit now, don't make trouble. A torrent of words flooded my brain, making my fevered mind even more muddled. It took me a moment to process what she meant. Zoe thought I was pretending to be sick. I collapsed back onto the bed, my consciousness growing even hazier. Just then, the phone rang again. I still held out hope that it was Zoe having a change of heart. But it was a college friend, William, I saw your social media. You're in the city too, right? Want to grab dinner? It took me a moment to recognize Jessica's voice. She was my best friend during college, but after graduation, we gradually lost touch. With a hoarse voice, I replied, Jessica, could you buy me some fever medicine? I'll send you the address. In less than half an hour, 
Jessica arrived at my room. I got up from the bed to open the door. Jessica walked in and asked, I thought your wife was here too. Why isn't she taking care of you? I smiled bitterly, she's out partying. We came to this city for a project Zoe was working on. That's her job, and I didn't mind, but Anthony decided to come too, saying he wanted to sightsee. I couldn't let him come alone with my wife, so I tagged along. But Zoe hadn't been kind to me the entire trip. Not only did we not share a room, but she also kept ordering me around. Jessica was speechless for a moment. After giving me the medicine, she went down to the supermarket to buy fever patches. Unfortunately, on her way back, she ran into Zoe and Anthony. For convenience, I had given Jessica my room card, but Zoe, upon seeing her, assumed she was a mistress. With a look of having caught someone in the act, she kicked open the door and started arguing with Jessica. I've told you many times, I'm William's college friend, believe it or not. What's a college friend doing in William's room in the middle of the night? You're just a shameless mistress. Jessica, always straightforward, prepared to confront her. Chapter 3. Jessica, wait a moment. I stood at the door, holding onto the wall, my body swaying. Zoe, I told you I was sick. If you wouldn't buy me medicine, I had to ask my friend. What madness is this now? I knew I must look very weak, so Zoe didn't doubt that I was truly sick. Her aggressive demeanor immediately softened, why didn't you explain earlier? If you had made it clear, I would have come back sooner. Jessica rolled her eyes, crossing her arms and looking at Zoe, lady, weren't you busy partying with your lover? Even if he told you, would you have believed him? Zoe glared at her, who are you calling a lover? William, I told you that Anthony and I are here for work. Are you going to spread rumors now? I was so feverish that I could barely stand. Jessica noticed and quickly applied a fever patch to my forehead. Only then did I regain a bit of clarity. Rumors. Zoe, be honest, did I say anything untrue? I just said you were out clubbing with another man and didn't want to buy me medicine. Which part was a lie? Zoe was at a loss for words, giving Jessica a death glare, why are you discussing our business with outsiders? This outsider just saved my life. And you? Since you came back, have you shown any concern for my illness? All you do is argue. Zoe fell silent, but Anthony, who had been listening, stepped in, who said Zoe doesn't care about you. We came back within half an hour after your call, didn't we? Jessica glanced at the bags in their hands. I've been to that club. It closes at 2 a.m. If it hadn't, you would have stayed all night, right? Zoe and Anthony both fell silent. I looked at Jessica. Thank you so much today. It's late, and it's not safe for you to go back alone. I'll pay for a room here at the hotel for you, and you can leave tomorrow. Jessica shook her head. No need, my brother is coming to pick me up. William, take care of yourself and don't let some shameless people take advantage of you. She glanced pointedly in Zoe's direction. Zoe immediately got angry. Who are you calling shameless? Whoever gets angry is who I'm calling shameless. Do you dare? Seeing that they were about to argue again, and with many neighbors opening their doors to watch, I shouted, Enough, Zoe, aren't you embarrassed? With that, I slammed the door, cutting off all sound. I was sick for three days, during which Zoe and Anthony went out alone every day to work, but I no longer cared. On the fourth day, once I had fully recovered, I decided to help Zoe and Anthony finish their project survey as soon as possible. The sooner we returned, the sooner I could deal with my issues with Zoe. I needed to reconsider our marriage. Who would have thought that, upon reaching the equipment truck, I would overhear Zoe and Anthony talking. On a whim, I turned on the recorder, feeling that I might capture something important. What should we do? This equipment is broken. That was Zoe's voice. This equipment costs over a million. None of us can afford to replace it. There was a moment of silence, and then Anthony spoke, I remember William's family has money, right? Yes, his parents run a business. What do you mean? Let's blame it on him. No one will know. Chapter 4 When they came out and saw me sitting on their temporary camping chair, they were all taken aback. William, when did you get here? I curled my lips into a sneer and replied, just now. Where did you guys go? I didn't see you. Zoe's face showed a bit of discomfort, but Anthony remained calm, didn't you hear us talking earlier? No. I shook my head. Sure enough, both Zoe and Anthony breathed a sigh of relief. Then, Anthony gave Zoe a significant look right in front of me, but I saw it all and watched them pretend with amusement. Zoe walked over to me and asked gently if I was feeling better. I inwardly laughed at their foolishness, unable even to disguise their actions, but I still nodded, much better. Then she went on to ask about my well-being for a while before finally getting to the point, honey, Anthony and I have been working all morning. 
How about you help us with one of the machines so we can take a break? I readily agreed. Sure, where's the machine? Zoe's eyes lit up, and she pointed to a black van not far away. It's in the back seat, the blue equipment. I walked over, catching a glimpse of Zoe and Anthony high-fiving out of the corner of my eye. I pretended not to see and opened the car door, looking around for a while. Honey, I can't find the equipment. Where is it? Isn't it right on that seat? I pretended to search some more, still can't see it, where exactly is it? Zoe's tone grew impatient, isn't it right there? How can you not see it? I quickly nodded, oh, here it is. But honey, I can't move it alone. Can you ask Anthony to help me? She blurted out, why are you so useless? Anthony can move it by himself. Realizing what she was saying, she quickly corrected herself, okay, I'll get him. I watched as Zoe went over and said something to Anthony, and they both glanced meaningfully in my direction. I knew they were up to something again. Anthony came over, casually belittling me, I've heard you've been working out for many years. What, was it just hormone injections? You can't even lift a small piece of equipment. I've been sick, my strength hasn't recovered. I didn't bother arguing with him and followed Anthony to lift the equipment together. There was a cunning glint in his eyes, clearly scheming something. I held the equipment steadily, I could easily carry two of these by myself. After all, I usually lift weights two to three times heavier at the gym, but I couldn't reveal that. Sure enough, after a few steps, Anthony suddenly exclaimed, William, hold this for a moment, I need to tie my shoelace. Without waiting for a response, he let go of the equipment. I quickly said, Anthony, hurry up, I can't hold this for long. The more I urged him, the slower he moved, telling me not to worry. I pretended to struggle, calling out several more times. Anthony, seeing that I still hadn't dropped it, couldn't stall tying his shoelace any longer and reluctantly got up. I then said, I need to tie my shoelace too. Anthony, you hold it. With that, I let go and crouched down. Anthony, having crouched for a while, suddenly stood up and felt momentarily dizzy, thinking he could handle it. He didn't pay much attention. In that moment of inattention, the equipment slipped from his hands and crashed straight to the ground. Chapter 5 the casing immediately shattered, and the main body of the device was full of cracks, rendering it unusable. This sudden turn of events shocked everyone. Zoe, from a distance, thought she had succeeded and hurried over, saying, William, this is a million dollar device. Since you broke it, you should pay for it. I innocently pointed at Anthony. It wasn't me. Anthony didn't hold it steady. Anthony, clearly stunned, instinctively retorted, no, it was you who let go first. I told you I needed to tie my shoelace, and you nodded. Zoe hadn't expected things to go this way and couldn't help but defend Anthony. Couldn't you wait until Anthony had a better grip before letting go? But Anthony did the same thing just now. He said he needed to tie his shoelace and suddenly let go without warning. If I hadn't held it steady, the one in trouble might have been me. Anthony, finally realizing, looked at me with reddened eyes. William, you did it on purpose. You pretended you couldn't hold it just to frame me. Why would I frame you? Are you suggesting that the machine was already broken? And I schemed to make you take the blame. I said in surprise, that would be unbelievably cruel of me. Zoe and Anthony's faces alternated between green and white. They opened their mouths, wanting to say something but finding no reasonable argument. I don't care. Even if the machine is broken, you still bear some responsibility. If there's compensation, we should share it. I quickly pointed to the nanny car behind us. No way. The dashcam captured everything clearly. I let go with your consent. Although the audio isn't clear, your nodding is visible. Shall we check the footage? After I said this. Anthony's face turned ashen. He squatted down and muttered to himself, A million dollars. I can't afford that. Even if I sold myself, I couldn't afford it. Seeing this, Zoe's heart ached. William, even if we take a step back, don't you bear any responsibility? What responsibility? Even if I take 10,000 steps back, I have no responsibility. Seeing that she couldn't argue with me, Zoe glared at me and hurried to comfort the squatting Anthony. All right, you two think about how to compensate. I've got something to do and need to go. Leaving them with this, I turned and drove straight to the city bank. After verifying my identity at the bank, I was ushered into the VIP room. I wasn't there to withdraw money for Anthony. On the contrary, I was there to prevent that from happening. Mr. Sue, what business would you like to conduct today? I want to cancel a supplementary card under my name. After getting married, I had given Zoe a supplementary card. I transferred all my company dividends to that card and told her to spend as she pleased. Knowing Zoe. She would surely use my card to pay Anthony's compensation. I had to cut off this possibility in advance. Certainly, your membership level is quite high, so we can process this immediately. After cancelling the supplementary card, I returned to Beijing before Zoe and Anthony realized what had happened. After the five-hour flight landed, as expected, my phone was flooded with calls, all from Zoe. Chapter 6 I slowly called back, 
and a hysterical voice immediately came through. William, did you cancel my card? Yes, is there a problem? Why did you cancel the card? Didn't you say it was for me to use? Besides, that's our marital property. Do you even have the right to cancel it? Listening to her anxious and unsettled voice, I chuckled. I have my reasons for cancelling the card. Do I need to report to you? Unlock the supplementary card immediately. I need to use it now. Zoe's voice carried a tone of command. Sorry, that's not going to happen. I replied lightly, clearly aiming to infuriate her. William, where are you now? I just went to your room and couldn't find you. Are you hiding? I pretended to remember and replied. Oh, I forgot to tell you. I went back to Beijing. Why did you go back? You were dissatisfied with me being there. Right, I thought about it. And since Anthony is in such a big mess, I decided not to add to his troubles. Zoe cursed me viciously on the other end, but I acted as if I didn't hear it. I even boredly picked my ear. Oh, and by the way, come back soon. Let's get a divorce. I dropped this bombshell and casually hung up the phone. After returning, I went to the company first. I instructed the receptionist and the security department to ensure that Zoe wasn't allowed and if she caused trouble, they should call the police directly. Then I went back to our downtown home and had the locks changed. I packed my bags and booked a month-long trip to Europe. I went to my parents' house and took them along for the trip. Happily, I set off on my vacation. I had already arranged for a professional agent to handle my business affairs. I got a new phone number for them to contact me if needed. I pulled out my old phone number and tucked it away in my wallet. Out of sight, out of mind. Since marrying Zoe, I had rarely felt so relaxed. She often pushed me to work hard, constantly belittling me, saying I couldn't give her a happy life, fearing that such a thing might happen. I worked like crazy. As the boss, I arrived at work earlier than everyone and left later than anyone. For the past three years, my nerves had been taut like a string, never relaxing, breathing in the moist air of an unknown European town. I felt my body and mind unwinding. Looking back, I couldn't believe how I had survived those days. After a comfortable month-long trip with my parents, I boarded the plane back home. My parents seemed to sense that there were problems in my marriage with Zoe, hence the vacation, but no one dared to ask, fearing it would upset me. I had once loved Zoe so much, to the point where I wouldn't marry anyone but her in this lifetime. I didn't explain to my parents, they were old, and getting upset wasn't good for them. I decided to handle my problems on my own. After returning home, I reinserted the phone card that had been dormant for a month, as expected. As soon as I inserted it, a flood of calls and messages poured in. In fact, Zoe had bombarded my social media accounts, but I had blocked her everywhere, which gave me some peace. I didn't even bother to read the hundreds of messages. I just called Zoe. When are we getting a divorce? On the other end was Zoe's hysterical voice. William, where have you been this month? Do you know Anthony took out a high interest loan to pay the compensation and is now being chased by creditors? How can you be so heartless? Chapter 7. Such good news? Unfortunately, I was so out of touch while abroad that I didn't know about it in time. I reached out to a mutual friend to get the full story of the past month. After I cancelled Zoe's supplementary card and left for abroad. Anthony went a bit crazy, shouting at Zoe, didn't you say you could pay for me, what now, I can't pay it back, Zoe, with her good temper, even tried to soothe him, it's okay, I'll go to Beijing and ask William for money face to face, but when she got to my house, she found out that not only had I left the country, but I had also changed the locks, helpless, Zoe went to my company, but no matter how much of a scene she caused, the receptionist never let her in, she then planned to appeal to my parents for sympathy only to discover that I had taken them away as well. This completely broke her. She had a small stash of around 300,000 yuan and borrowed more from various people. But my friends not only refused to lend her money, they also scolded her. She tried borrowing from her colleagues and managed to scrape together only about 100,000 yuan. Still 600,000 short. The lab that owned the damaged equipment was urging Anthony to pay up. So he gritted his teeth and borrowed 600,000 yuan from local loan sharks, agreeing to repay 700,000 yuan within a month. Who knows where he got the confidence to think he could repay the money. Maybe he thought with Zoe, he could still extract money from me. A month passed, and debt collectors caused a ruckus at Anthony's company, resulting in him losing his job. He hid elsewhere but was found and beaten by the collectors. Ending up in the hospital, the loan sharks called everyone around Anthony incessantly. Now he was abandoned by everyone except Zoe, who still stayed by his side in the hospital. My friend told me this vivid story, and I couldn't help but laugh, he advised. The most important thing now is to divorce Zoe, but I doubt it will be easy. I reassured him, don't worry, I have evidence. If Zoe agrees to the divorce amicably, that's fine. But if she causes trouble and takes it to court, it won't just be a simple divorce. Sure enough, as soon as Zoe heard I was back in the country, she rushed to find me. She looked quite haggard from taking care of someone and walked briskly towards me as soon as she saw me. William, where have you been this past month? 
Do you know how hard it's been for us here? I know. So what does that have to do with me? I replied emotionlessly. I'm still your wife. Is there a problem with me wanting to use our joint marital property? I watched her rage and said. Didn't you receive my divorce agreement? You leave with nothing. Why? I didn't cheat. I sneered and played an audio recording from my phone. It's not just about cheating. I have reason to believe that you married me with ulterior motives. You're talking nonsense. Zoe had been angrily cursing me, but quickly fell silent as she heard the voices from the phone. What do we do? This equipment is broken. It was Zoe's voice. This equipment costs over a million. If we break it, neither of us can afford to pay. The clear voices of the two filled the room. Zoe muttered in disbelief. You knew. You knew everything. Chapter 8. So what if I knew? Zoe's eyes suddenly flashed with malice as she glared at me. So you deliberately called Anthony over to help you move the equipment just to frame him. I frowned at her wording. Wrong. Anthony tried to frame me but ended up harming himself. Zoe. I'm the victim here. I only avoided your trap. Everything you and Anthony are facing now is what you deserve. And let me tell you, if you don't agree to the divorce, I'll submit this recording to the police. You and Anthony might end up meeting in prison. Hearing my last words, Zoe finally showed fear, lowering her once proud head. William, you're something else. Doesn't three years of marriage make you feel any pity? For people like you, it's not worth it. I replied coldly, watching Zoe sign the divorce agreement. I immediately sent it to my lawyer and scheduled the formalities for a month later. There's a one-month cooling-off period for divorces now, but I won't regret it. That incident made me see Zoe's true nature and realize that my three years of feelings were not worth it. That's why I could walk away so firmly. Otherwise, I would still be trapped in Zoe's manipulations, unable to break free. A few days later was a class reunion, which I attended. My classmates knew about my divorce and didn't try to persuade me otherwise. Only Jessica patted my shoulder. That day at the hotel. I wanted to advise you to get a divorce, but thinking about how you were in college, chasing Zoe like crazy, I was afraid you'd regret it after recovering, so I didn't say anything. I laughed. Back in college, I was poor at judging people. I would just throw myself at anyone I fancied. I replied awkwardly, Jessica, I just got out of a marriage. I don't want to jump into another one. She raised her hand to stop me, not the least bit embarrassed. Who's asking you to agree now? There's plenty of time in the future. She gave me a bright smile, and I smiled back. Indeed, there's plenty of time in the future. A month later, the day Zoe and I had scheduled to finalize the divorce arrived. Zoe seemed to have dressed up carefully. I couldn't tell if it was to celebrate the divorce or to make me regret it. But no matter how beautiful she looked, I couldn't care less. Let's go. Get the formalities done. Wait, William, you know once we go in, there's no turning back. I nodded indifferently. What was there to regret? Seeing my attitude, Zoe bit her lip and stepped closer but I regret it. Don't you want to give our marriage another chance? I quickly pushed her away. Just the mere touch made me feel disgusted. Zoe, we both know the truth. Even if we go back, there will always be a rift between us. Whether you cheated or not, you've already crossed my bottom line. We are never going back. Chapter 9. After I finished speaking, Zoe seemed to finally give up, her face turning cold. William, you're really something. What I didn't see was her signaling to someone behind a nearby car. Zoe and I entered the Civil Affairs Bureau together. Reflecting on the last time I came here, I was so excited and full of anticipation for married life, but now, looking back, that kind of life only existed in my memory because I married Zoe, so it could never happen, the procedures were completed faster than I expected, and I breathed a sigh of relief as I held the divorce certificate, it was all over, perhaps seeing my relaxation, Zoe's face turned extremely ugly, what, divorcing me makes you so happy, I laughed twice, sorry, you noticed, since you noticed, I won't pretend anymore, after leaving the Civil Affairs Bureau, I walked to my car, ready to open the door, but Zoe suddenly approached me. Even though we're divorced, it was a peaceful divorce, why not give me a ride? I didn't even look at her, sorry, it's inconvenient, I have to pick someone up later. Jessica had just come to Beijing for a business trip and had arranged to have dinner with me. I was busy replying to her. Zoe glanced at my phone, her tone angry, chatting with a woman. Ah, huh. I can't believe you found someone else right after our divorce, trying to guilt trip me again. I sneered and retorted, better than you, finding someone before the divorce, you, I was chatting with Jessica and didn't notice when Zoe disappeared, suddenly, Anthony's voice came from behind me, William, if it weren't for you, I wouldn't be in this situation, it's all your fault, let's go to hell together, I didn't have time to react, looking up, I saw Anthony rushing at me with a gleaming knife, I dodged the fatal spot, but the knife still stabbed into my chest, all the strength in my body seemed to drain away, leaving me empty, I watched as blood spurted out, there were few people on this road at this time. Anthony, realizing what he had done, turned and ran. The Civil Affairs Bureau staff came out and saw me lying in a pool of blood. They screamed and quickly called an ambulance. 
When I was being lifted into the ambulance, I was barely conscious, grabbing a doctor's hand and shouting, the culprit is Anthony, and Zoe is an accomplice, I don't know if the doctor heard me, as I passed out, when I woke up, I was already in the hospital, my chest hurt terribly, and even the slightest movement felt like it was tearing, I had no choice but to move my eyes and saw Jessica sleeping beside me, holding my hand, I gently moved my fingers, and Jessica immediately woke up, pleasantly surprised, you're awake, I'll call the doctor, Jessica brought the doctor, who gave a brief explanation of my condition, Anthony had aimed for my heart, but luckily, I dodged a bit, so the stab wound wasn't fatal, however, I had lost a lot of blood and was very weak, and with the wound just treated, I couldn't move for a while and had to stay in bed, but what I wanted to know wasn't this, it was whether Anthony and Zoe had been caught. Chapter 10 After the ambulance arrived, the Civil Affairs Bureau employee called the police and followed me to the hospital. Since I was unconscious, the doctor relayed my pre-ambulance statement to the police, and with surveillance footage from the scene, Zoe and Anthony were quickly identified. Zoe was arrested that day, but Anthony was nowhere to be found. The police found evidence of Zoe conspiring to harm me in her phone, proving her complicity. Now, the police were conducting a citywide search for Anthony. I nodded to show my understanding. I never expected Anthony would actually dare to stab me in public. It seemed he was ready to risk everything. Reflecting on it, I was relieved I had dodged the critical spot. Otherwise, if Anthony had succeeded, it would have been a terrible loss. Zoe's parents came to the hospital with fruit to plead with me. Even though I had been their son-in-law for three years, I still remembered how they had tried to exploit me for money. Zoe's mother sat by my bed and glanced at Jessica, who was peeling an apple. Could the nurse step out? We have something to say. Auntie, you can speak freely. This is my girlfriend. Jessica's eyes lit up as she looked at me. I nodded at her, while Zoe's mother looked displeased. You found a girlfriend right after divorcing Zoe. Were you seeing her before the divorce? Stop. I don't need to explain my fidelity to you. But Zoe, conspiring to murder me, isn't exactly irrelevant. Zoe's mother looked embarrassed. I'm here to persuade you. After all, you and Zoe were married for three years. Can't you let this go over a minor issue? Minor issue. I frowned. I was stabbed and almost died. As a parent, how would you feel if someone did this to Zoe? Zoe's mother stubbornly said, but you didn't die, did you? Looking at her face, which resembled Zoe's, I felt nothing but disgust. Rest assured, if I had died, your daughter wouldn't be alive either. Attempted murder carries the death penalty. Maybe Zoe was misled by that Anthony. You know she's not like that. Hearing the same old excuse, I grew impatient. Jessica seemed to have had enough. Standing up to drive them out, the patient needs rest. If you have nothing else, please leave, or I'll call security, you little girl, you. Before they could say more, Jessica pushed them all out, leaving the room quiet. She sat back down and asked me, were you serious just now? I pretended not to understand, about what? About me being your girlfriend. I covered myself with the blanket. I don't say things lightly. Whatever I say reflects what I'm truly thinking. A week later, Anthony was caught on a boat trying to smuggle himself out of the country. He had planned to escape abroad but was caught during a crackdown on smuggling. In court, Anthony and Zoe pointed fingers at each other, each claiming the other was the mastermind and that they were the victim. Ultimately, the evidence showed that the idea to harm me originated with Anthony. With solid evidence, the court sentenced Anthony to life imprisonment for attempted murder. Zoe, as an accomplice, was sentenced to 10 years. Zoe's parents spent all their money and pulled every string they could to reduce her sentence, but to no avail. They all received the punishment they deserved.